In May of 2022, the North Dakota Game and Fish Department teamed with two leading conservation organizations to deploy five transmitters on long-billed curlews in southwest North Dakota to track their movements in North Dakota and elsewhere to better recognize habitat use. In this week's program, we will talk with researchers and give an update on these conspicuous birds. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. We, we actually came here last year and, and this time of year, mid-May, and we were able to deploy five different transmitters on individual adult long-billed curlews and track movement south for the winter. And we're back this year to see if we can add as many as maybe potentially seven, but hopefully at least four or five more transmitters. And of the North Dakota birds, three of them migrated to the Laguna Madre ecosystem down to the border between Texas and Mexico. One went offline pretty quickly, and so we think it was a transmitter failure issue, but two wintered either side of the border in Texas and Mexico, and then two others went to the interior of Mexico and Durango, which, and they stayed for a while, and then they both moved to other areas. One went to the west coast of Mexico, and one went further south in interior Mexico. One of the most surprising instances was uh, seeing a bird tracks right on a, a kind of a, a community college campus in South Texas and um, I was able to reach out to the folks there and basically they went out and were taking pictures of these birds with their cell phones. I mean we're always curious to see like what habitat the birds are in and how many birds are out there and so they had like an easily a dozen curlews feeding in the lawns on this campus and so then that tied into uh, their biology club um, and Jay's outfit, Intermountain Bird Observatory, provided some uh, an outreach presentation on the curlews that the students were able to participate in. So that was kind of an interesting connection, but literally had like a crisscross pattern across the campus of where these birds were feeding in the winter. It was really fun watching when these birds left the state and just wondering where are they gonna end up at and just how a couple went to you know Western Mexico and a couple went to uh, Texas coast and uh, Laguna Madre area. So. We, we kind of figured that that's where they were going to go, but it was still just really interesting to see, you know, how long it took them and where they stopped along the way. And then just uh, talking with other state partners, you know, about curlews and stopover habitat and just how it, it just really all comes together, how important all those places are. When you're watching birds move on your computer, it's kind of exciting to look for the, the daily updates or some of them are updating every four hours and particularly when the birds are in movement, it's neat to see how far they're going in a day. Some of the birds would just go from like point A to point B and then just winter in that same location and others were moving around quite a bit. And then with the, uh, the cellular technology tags that we get the finer resolution, we had some birds that were moving around in urban areas. So it's pretty interesting to see like, hey, there's a curlew in a field next to a fast food restaurant. And um, also taking advantage of locations of birds to contact local birders and then they would go out and try and recite them. In a lot of those cases, they saw them with six or 12 other birds. So kind of using the tag birds to find groups of other birds, which is neat too. Hundreds of miles from Western North Dakota down to the Texas coast, and then another 500 or more to the interior of Mexico. Um, and the one thing I should also say is we're interested in where they're connected to in terms of wintering grounds, but also what are important stopover routes and, or migration routes and potential stopover areas. And we definitely saw some evidence for a lot of birds stopping over in Kansas, but also other states in the Southern Great Plains sort of between us and Texas and Mexico. Um, but relatively direct routes, basically kind of straight south towards that, Southern Texas, West Texas, et cetera. Um, and get there in 24 hours or less in some cases, but other birds would stop over for a day or two along the way. Um, so, you know, a few days, um, but individuals vary. So some birds were stopping over for a few days, others were just quick stop over, keep going. And many, many points a day, and the fine scale nature of the data is very powerful because you can really see I mean, we actually used the data from one of those cellular ones to zero in on exactly where she was nesting so we could then catch her mate this year. Um, and it was that fine scale that we knew exactly where to look. When they showed up in North Dakota, it was they went back to the field that they were in last year. And, you know, that's why it's, it's so important that, you know, that landscape is intact for them. And um, if that field, the grass is too long, you know, there's some, some grass just 
few hundred yards to the east that you know is the right right height and provides the right resources for them. What's pretty cool is these birds are basically exactly back on their same territory. So we've actually found nests of two of the individuals and um, one is about 500 yards to the east of where she nested last year. Another one is maybe 300 meters east of where he was last year. So very similar territories. Um, so yeah, basically right back to the same home, if you will. To work on these, these birds out here, we have to work closely with landowners and develop and maintain those relationships. And uh, it's great working with a lot of North Dakota landowners that are really proud stewards of the land and interested and really curious about what they have on their land. The point of pride in stewardship is looking at these intact landscapes that maintain these species and realizing that it's a part of the whole system. So we have a saying that like what's good for the bird is good for the herd. So um, a lot of holistic managers are getting in, into that kind of thinking and more and more people are looking at birds as indicators of the range health and then that's going to tie into economic health for their operations. We have the long-billed curlew on the species of conservation priority list because we have lost some in the state. Their range has contracted over time, so it's a relatively small area of the state that we find curlews in anymore. So our role with this project is we are providing funding for uh, the researchers to come out and take the birds, and that funding is from the non-game fund, the, the Watchful Wildlife Tax Checkoff Fund. So it's really funded by people who donate to that account. Long-billed curlews have been recognized for a long time that they've declined at least some in parts of their range, and they're, they're sort of an emblematic species of North American grasslands that are important to monitor as maybe like signals of grassland ecosystem health. So there's concern about their populations and a desire to learn more about them and by using tracking devices to connect breeding and wintering areas but also identify important migration routes and habitats throughout the range because that really can vary from east to west and north to south. Um, it helps us as managers and biologists understand what the species needs and how we might be able to affect future management that could help, for instance, on the wintering grounds and identifying important feeding areas, but maybe more importantly, important roosting areas where groups can gather at night in a safe place to roost. And if we lose those, then maybe we lose carrying capacity for some of the great feeding habitat nearby. So they need all these things to carry them through the full daily cycle, but also the full annual cycle. So the more information we have about this migratory connectivity and key habitats, the better informed we are to make conservation decisions where we can maybe make a balanced decision, what's right for humans, but can also still work for, for the birds. All this habitat is really important to these birds, but also to the people that live out here. I mean, these are some beautiful grasslands out here in western North Dakota. So if you haven't been out here, it's just, just, it's just beautiful being out here and listening to the birds and some great people. You know, we, we couldn't do this without uh, permission of the landowners to be out here.